Hello everyone, welcome back. This week is going to be our last uh, big church word that we're going to talk about this month. Starting next week, we are into the season of Lent, and so the lessons that I'm going to do in the weeks ahead will reflect around the Lenten season and what that means for us as believers and how Jesus prepared his disciples for the time when he would no longer be with them. But today we're going to talk about something else that's important, and it kind of, kind of goes along with what Jesus did for us, but we're going to talk about the word sanctification. And I looked up in the Bible dictionary, and this is what I found as a definition for sanctification. It says, it is the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in the hearts of believers. So when Jesus left to go to heaven and was no longer physically living with the disciples, he wanted them to know he wasn't abandoning them, but that he was sending them someone to help them. And that helper was the Holy Spirit. And so as we see in this verse, it's a promise to us too that the Holy Spirit is coming into our lives when we become believers and it helps us to uh, become more like Jesus. And so it's important for us as believers to realize that God didn't leave us to figure out all this stuff on our own. He sent the Holy Spirit to help us to become the people that he wants us to be. So let's look. And what I like to think about I, before we, we get started any further in, I like to think of sanctification as the on, ongoing process where God makes us more and more like Jesus. And there, it's a process. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be something that God does in us that we cooperate with, and he changes us and makes us more like Jesus. Let's start out by digging into God's word and seeing what the Bible tells us about some things about being sanctified or set apart to serve God and to become more like Jesus. How does he help us to do that? So I'm going to read the very first verse that I have today. It comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4. And this is what it said. Each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. So we have a responsibility to live lives that are holy and honorable. Holy means set apart. So what that means for us is in our daily lives it's how we choose to live so what do our words say about us what do our actions say about us what does the things that we choose to do say about us like what do we read what do we watch on tv what kind of video games do we play or music do we listen to it should be things that honor and glorify god and not reflect the world around us. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means um, in these next couple of verses that I want to read to you from the Bible. So God calls us to live differently than everybody around us. And it should be evident. So let's go to Romans chapter 12. Uh, the Bible is very helpful to help us to understand how to do this. So this is what Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 tell us. Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your body as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So he helps us and he changes us. That's what conform means. He changes us and cha makes us into uh, people that honor and glorify God. So we have to cooperate, but he does it in us. Then the next verse that I came across that I thought was very helpful to, to help us think about this, it tells us the danger of being in the world, but not being different than the world. It says to us, do not live, love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So 
things in this world that are not honorable, that don't glorify God, are things that we don't need to spend our time on. He wants us to put those things aside and trust in his will. And in the verse that we read before, it tells us that if we are willing for God to change us, then he will make our mind to be able to understand what his will is every day that we live our lives. And that verse was from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. So that's just helpful to know because loving the world and loving God don't mix. Um, we should have love for God. We should love what God wants to do in us. And we should cooperate with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit changes us. Now I want to give you, I have a object lesson here that I kind of wanted to do to kind of show you a little bit how this might look. So this is the world. I have water in here, about up to here. And then this is Jesus. You know, Jesus came into the world and he lived in the world, but he didn't get mixed up in the world. You can see all the oil is up on the top of this water. And then this, I have some food coloring and this represents sin. And as you can see, sin is in the world, but it doesn't have to be part of us. Jesus protects us and helps us to not become part of the world. He helps us to repel sin, basically. You know, we're still going to make mistakes and we're still going to do things wrong. But he loves us and he forgives us and we have to ask him. That's part of cooperating, is asking him to take those things out of our lives that can keep us away from and separated from God. When we sin, we are like everybody else in the world. We don't reflect God's glory. We don't if if we talk back to our parents or we tell lies or we steal things or we are a bully, uh then we don't reflect God's love. People only see the bad things that we do. They don't see the things that Jesus wants to do for them. And so he sent us the Holy Spirit that helps us to know what we should do and what we shouldn't do and how we can live a life that reflects God's glory. It's going to be hard to live in this world and be different, but God didn't leave us on, the, on our own. Like I said, he sent us a helper. He sent us the Holy Spirit. So I looked up some verses all through the Bible, through the, the New Testament, that helps us to understand how the Holy Spirit helps us and how we can cooperate with what, what God wants to do in our lives. And so I'm not going to read them all, but I wanted to go through some of the main ones um, that I found to be very helpful um, as a believer to, to realize what I have as a tool in the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit helps me. So first of all, I looked up where Jesus was preparing his disciples for the time when he would no longer be with them. And he said the Father was going to send a helper, a friend, and that was the Holy Spirit. And it said the Holy Spirit would teach them and remind them of everything that Jesus had done with them. So they might have been afraid that when Jesus was gone, they wouldn't remember what they were supposed to do. But Jesus said, don't worry about that. I'm sending you a, a friend who's going to help you to be able to do those things. And he's going to continue to teach you the things that I didn't get to do while I was with you. So that's helpful to know that we have that same promise. The Holy Spirit is our friend and the Holy Spirit's going to remind us of everything we need to remember about God and how to glorify him in our lives. So the next one I looked up was in... 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, and it just tells us that the Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. He's with us all the time. He never leaves us. He's with us 24-7, 365 days a year, seven days a week. He never leaves us alone. The next verse is tells us that um, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit will help us to know what is true about God. It will help us to know what is God telling us or what is he showing us or what does he want us to speak. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And then Romans 8, 26 tells us, and I want to read this one, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 
We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. So the Holy Spirit not only helps us, he's praying for us and interceding for us. And so that's awesome to know that I have that kind of uh, presence in my daily life. And then not only that, um, the Holy Spirit produces fruit in our life. We've talked about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. All of those different th characters of characteristics of God that he wants to develop in us, the Holy Spirit helps to grow those things in us if we cooperate. Just like if you plant a fruit seed, you're not going to get an apple tree if you don't water it and you don't take care of it. So that's what um, God gives us the fruit of the Spirit, and we have to work on that. We have to cooperate with what He wants to do in us. And then uh, Acts 1.8 tells us that God gives us the power to share the gospel with other people. Um, in Genesis 5.16, He tells us how to live by the Spirit and not be controlled by sin. The Holy Spirit helps us to not sin. Um, another one from, uh, let's see. 1 Corinthians 2.12 helps us to understand that God helps us and he loves us and he guides us and he helps us to know what comes from him and the things that will honor and glorify him. Another verse tells us that the Holy Spirit gives is the power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. So the Holy Spirit is powerful. He gives us power and strength and the ability to do the things that are beyond us as human beings to do. And then the last verse that I want to read to you today comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For the holy the spirit God gave us does not make us timid but gives us power, love and self-discipline. So those things that we can't do on our own, God gives us the ability to do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, he didn't have the expectation that we would figure out how to be more like him every day. He didn't just leave it up to us to do good things that uh, help others and show other people our love. But he gave us the Holy Spirit that helps make a difference and changes us and transforms us into the people that God wants us to be. As we become more and more like Jesus, I, I just pray that you will avail yourself of the power that comes from the Holy Spirit to make a difference in your life. I pray that each day, as long as you live, you begin to reflect Jesus's image more and more every day. That's what sanctification does for us. It helps us to be set apart, but then it also helps us to reflect God's glory in everything we do, everything we say, every thought that we think. He will be with us and he will help us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray and I hope you'll come back next week as we start to move through the Lenten season. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you that you didn't just leave us down here to figure out all of this stuff by ourselves, but that when the Holy Spirit came, you equipped each believer with the ability to be transformed, to reflect your glory, to do the things that you call us to do, and to help us in the areas where we're weak. So, Lord, may we avail ourselves of the power that you have provided each and every one of the believers through the power of the Holy Spirit to live the lives that reflect, honor, and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye for now, and I hope you'll come back next week.